finally, now we're going to take a look at the ES1 in terms of creating a pad or a string sound for you, get some nice textures into your tracks. So what I've done here is just created a MIDI part, just played in on the keyboard, uh, a real simple chord structure. Uh, Use the sort of fifths, ninths and sevenths of a chord to make a nice Chicago house sound. So now I'm going to look for a nice sawtooth a pad, give it loads of chorus, nice and thick, and you'll see how we do that. So we'll load the ES1 up. Get that to there. So load the ES1 up. From the default setting, I'm going to move the wave mix level straight up to the top there. The selector is already on sawtooth for you, so you don't need to move that. Um, but I'm going to move it down the register because it's going to be too high. So I want it a little bit thicker than that. And as I said, I'm going to put some chorus on there as well. So just use the uh, first setting on that. Just going to turn all the modulation and the LFI modulation off for now. And I'm going to give that a play. So that's cool. Uh, a little bit too percussive. So I'm just going to take some of the attack out. I'm going to push all the sustain up because I want those to be sustained. That's cool. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a little less volume and a little bit of, of release as well. So it's starting to resemble that old uh, Kerry Chandler, Derek Carter sort of Chicago house. I'm just going to pull the resonance out of that for now and push push the filter up a little bit more. But what I am going to do is just move the yeah the key modulation down a little bit so it's not so so harsh. So there you've got your basic uh, house housey pad that you can fill your tracks out with, whether in your breakdowns or you side chain it to the kick and have it within your your loop structure. But what we can do now is just take a look at how we can make that a little bit more interesting uh, through some LFO modulation. So what we're going to do is to uh, use the router and select the cutoff parameter and push the slider right up to the top. So we're going to hear maximum uh, LFO modulation to start with. And I'm going to use the sync uh, side of the rate fader because I want it to be in time with the BPM of the track. I want the modulation to be occurring over two bars. So if you now give that a play. You can hear that the filter is being modulated by the pulse width of the triangle that we've decided to use on the LFO down here. Um, if you want that to have less effect then just pull the intensity faded down and then if you want the modulation to only sort of affect your sound ever so slightly, you can pull the bottom of the two faders down a touch. So you can hear there the modulation only really affecting the pad ever so slightly. If you want to change the um, LFO sequence in the way that it's affecting the cutoff frequency, then obviously just uh, choose another wave. You can have an ascending or descending uh, sawtooth wave. So let's have uh, an ascending one. And we'll put the intensity right back up to the top there so you can hear the difference. So you can hear over the two bars uh, the filter increasing as the sound went on. If you want that to occur in a more frequent pattern over your structure then just move up to a bar. So you've seen there, we've been able to use the LFO um, and able to modulate the frequency to add an interesting characteristic to our pad, which you guys can maybe apply to your breakdowns, and give them a bit more depth, give them a bit more space, and make them sound less generic. So that's pretty much the ES1. Uh, why don't you guys now go and have a real play around with everything that you've gone through, create some bass sounds, have a go with some drums, and then some pads as well, and, and get your head around the LFO side of things and, and what you can actually modulate. And, and how you can use those in your tracks. And then next we'll look at Logic's ES2.